Now today's Spec Corvette build project is to start stripping the interior. Uh, there's a, I haven't done anything to the car yet really other than just driving it around, getting to know it uh, since I picked it up. But uh, Spec Racing in Southern California has got a spot open in a couple of weeks to do uh, the roll cage and I really want them to do the roll cage. They do a, an outstanding job. So I'm gonna get to work stripping this thing down and stop driving it around and, uh, and get it cleaned out. So. Not sure how to document this exactly. I think I'll probably cut back and forth. Uh, you'll find that the interior is pretty easy to remove with a couple of very minor exceptions. So um, I'll just cut in and out and talk about some of the things that you need to know. I'm making pretty quick work of this um, interior removal. Uh, so I figured I'd just pause for a second and, and point a couple things out. They're probably relatively basic, although some things I didn't quite realize the first time I did this. So. Um, anyway, you'll find all this comes out really easy. So the seats just have uh, basically four bolts holding them down or four nuts that you'll remove to pull them out. And once you get at that out of the way and the center console out of the way, uh, the carpet just about comes right out. The only thing really that, that you got to be aware of that's holding it in are your stock dead pedal. And um, and then this is like a, a little backer that goes behind the gas pedal to, to give you a stop, right? Um, so both of these need to come out uh, in order to get the carpet out. Uh, you're probably going to want to go ahead and put these back in because you really don't want to be flexing on that pedal in a race. You'll find that you put an awful lot of force on it uh, and you could cause a problem if you don't have this backer in there So or the, this dead stop. So... So I recommend that you put this back in. And then in my other car, same thing with this dead pedal. Um, I didn't find a reason to do anything other than run the stock version of it. So maybe one note on this dead pedal is that I did not realize when I did my first car that there were actually two nuts holding it down. So there's one on the bottom and you can kind of see the hole right here. And then there's also one at the top. Uh, and so I had undone the one in the bottom because I could see it pretty easily and started yanking on it And then I ended up cracking this the guy up here off um, And so with this one, I was just a little more cautious when I took it off uh, They are opposing directions that they go in so it just requires a little bit of care as you're pulling it out of there So I'm gonna go ahead and mount those back in um, And then th that'll all be happy uh, Let's see what else the um, Moving over here to the other side. I've got the door panel out And I've already removed the window glass and stuff like that. There are lots of videos on how to do this, so I won't go into a ton of detail, but um, some things are obvious while this is out and I always forget and have to look it up. So uh, might as well document it. So these little, these little white circle tabs, these are the places where the door attaches or the, the door panel attaches and those just get pried out direct, you know, uh, directly towards you. Uh, they'll pop out. Uh, there's a couple uh, little bolts or screws that go behind the handle that hold this thing in, you know, and, and then otherwise you're just going to pull the panel out and separate it from the handle. The handle stays in place uh, and then it'll lift right out. So that's a piece of cake. Um, in my case, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the window regulator and window glass uh, because it takes a fair amount of weight out of there and I don't really need it. Some folks choose to leave that in and that's you know totally up to you um this one's going to be a dedicated race car and i'll be towing it in an enclosed trailer so i'm not worried about putting the windows up or anything like that but i've raced against plenty of guys that left these in here that left their full hvac system in there um and they were super duper competitive so um, the way that the spec Corvette rules are written, if you decided to leave this stuff in, basically you just wouldn't add any ballast. In my case, I'm going to end up being a little bit light uh, with this build, so I'm going to end up having to add a little bit of weight. Uh, and so when I do that, I'll just put the weight really back here, kind of towards the passenger floor down low, which is really where the car needs it anyway. So for an optimum build, I would do something like that. Anyway, getting this regulator and glass out is also extremely easy. You're talking about a couple minutes. Uh, so in this porthole here, and then again over uh, here, uh, there are little 13 millimeter head nuts back there that hold the glass in. So you just take those out completely, and then you can lift the glass out of the top. And then you're going to pull the remainder of the, of the little uh, 10 millimeter head nuts out to get the window regulator out itself. And it's super quick and fast. 
Uh, uh, see, another thing to note is that as you take out the interior, you're gonna uncover uh, a sensor down here on the floor. Um, and the first time I did this, I had no idea what that sensor was and it was really tempting to unplug it. But this sensor and there's a black one over here under the dash. So it's, uh, let's see if I can do this, it's this guy back here. Uh, the yellow one is your airbag uh, forward collision sensor, and that one's okay to, to pull out and get rid of. But this black one over here is your yaw sensor. So you're going to want to keep that and keep it plugged in. Uh, and I believe this one's uh, lateral acceleration. And you're going to want to keep that plugged in as well for traction control. I'm probably not going to do it on this car. There are ways, as I understand it, um, to completely disable traction control by undoing sensors. But if all you do is undo this guy or that or that yaw sensor over there, that's going to disable part of your traction of your stability control, but it's not going to disable traction control and that's going to cause a problem for you. So I personally prefer to have the fun the, the system entirely functional. And then uh, for now, I'm retaining this button, but when I do this build later, I'm going to replace this with a momentary switch. Uh, so I keep the whole system functional. I can turn it on and off. Uh, down the road, I may experiment uh, with actually, uh, there's, a, there's a mod where you can snip a wire up at the electronic uh, brake control module to disable the traction control on the rear of the car, uh, which is the other portion that's necessary. So I'll be doing that. Uh, another thing to note while it's on my mind, I haven't pulled the dash out yet. But uh, in these cars, we've got our hazard switch up here in the dash. I don't know why they did it this way, but there's a bunch of stuff that actually runs through this hazard switch. So it's kind of tempting to get it out of there and put, put in gauges or whatever. Um, you're gonna wanna hold on to that. Uh, if you disconnect that and don't reconnect it, you're gonna find that you don't have um, your center brake light works, but the, the two brake lights on either side and the rear uh, won't actually function without that in there and without doing some other wiring to replace it. So I'll be hanging on to that. I held on to it in the other car as well. So uh, so let, let's see, is there anything else? Um, I guess one other thing that's just a little weird is uh, I always forget this. Uh, oh, well, I kind of remembered this time, I guess. But uh, this is when you're taking out the, the headliner up top. The visor uh, just basically sits in uh, that little pocket right there uh, and sits up in here. And this notch that you see right there, uh, to get this guy out, all you're gonna do is kind of shove a screwdriver up in there and then twist your visor around towards the outside of the car. And when you do that, it'll pop down and you'll be able to pull it out and then uh, disconnect this guy here uh, to get that out. So that's relatively easy. I think that's about it for now. I'm gonna keep on keep on trucking, uh, pull out the dash and start to get rid of some of the things that are under there. So I'll tune back in to talk about what I'm doing there. Uh, now is also a good time to just go ahead and check your outside frame rails though. Uh, one of my parts cars that I picked up at one point, I found when I took off the plastic here uh, that there was actually damage to the side rail from a side impact that had been covered up by a, a new rocker. Um, in this particular case, everything's looking good. So I've just gone around the car, inspected uh, all the SMC in the back to make sure that there aren't any cracks. All that looks good. I didn't find any evidence of leaks or anything like that. So the car looks to be pretty solid. Um, so anyway, I'm going to keep on trucking here and I'll come back and chat with you all in a bit. Well, disassembly on the Spec Corvette is coming along pretty well. I've got a decent pile of stuff accumulating on the shop floor up there that I'm going to have to start listing and selling so that I can get it out of here. Um, I've got the dash pad out inside. Um, like I talked about last time, pretty much everything is, else is out of the interior for now. Um, and uh, I'll talk briefly about what's going on here. Um, now I'm going to just go through and pull my passenger side airbag. Um, really right now I'm just trying to get this to the point that I can get the roll cage in. Uh, so I'm going to leave the steering wheel for now. I'll get that out later. But those airbags, I'm going to look just look to sell. There is a market for them. You can recoup a little bit of money that way. So I'm going to I'll pull that. I will hang on to this uh, little plastic cover, um, and I'll do a separate video on how I reinsert that into the dash, just because I think it looks decent and it's fairly light. But the airbag's going to come out. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the heater box, which is back here. I've got a separate video that I did uh, with a different car on how to do that specifically. 
And that's honestly, that's the worst part of, of uh, doing the, uh, pulling out the interior. That one's kind of a pain in the butt to get to um, because you actually have to get behind the intake and uh, unbolt it from the engine side of the firewall to slide that thing out. Uh, you've also got to get this carriage out of the way so that you can just, you can pull it. Um, but I'm going to do it uh, because uh, it's a fair amount of weight. I'm not going to run my HVAC at all uh, while I'm in races, so I'd rather get it out now. And when the cage goes in, there's going to be a, like a crossbar coming down here someplace. And when that crossbar is in, it's like next to impossible to get the heater box out without using a Sawzall or something like that to cut it out. So I'm just going to do it now, even though it's kind of a pain. So check out that video. I'll link to it here at the end. On, uh, on how to get that out. And then otherwise, it, uh, having that out is gonna give me a, a lot of room back there to, to go ahead and clean up uh, wiring and, and things like that and just make the thing easier to work on. So uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I've seen other guys actually run their spec Corvettes without uh, removing that. Um, it is extra weight, but because we're running ballast, like I mentioned before, it doesn't, it doesn't make that big of a difference. So some guys, uh, have actually been known to sit on pre-grid running the air conditioning to keep themselves cool. So if that's the route you want to take, this is your your fork in the road. You can decide whether you want to leave it or not. Um, but it is kind of important to make that decision now because once you put the cage in, it's going to be tough to get out. So um, so that's about it on the interior pull. Like I said, check out the, uh, the next video on how to actually get that thing out. It's going to involve removing the intake um, probably removing the, um, the air system that comes on the stock unit and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, but otherwise, uh, once you get that heater box out of the way, the car's pretty much ready for your cage.